process. This is, in other words, uh, you can say um, it's, it's growth. After our birth, there is a growth process, which is what we could also call a sanctification. Is that a must? Even without that, is just not the, the justification part sufficient? We still get a ticket to heaven. Are we not happy with that? Why do we have to do anything more than just accepting the Lord Jesus Christ and then waiting for his return or our being with him? What is the in-between time for? Deepak has already explained part of it. God is working in our lives. Otherwise, he would have, as soon as somebody is saved, God would just take him to be with him. Our earthly life is not trivial, not an unimportant thing for God. God wants us in whatever endeavors that we are in. I understand that some of you are uh, medical students who have jo joined the uh, profession this year. That is a very important transition time in your lives. Even this is important to God. So this growth is what he was mentioning, the different paradigms of salvation. I will not go into that. This growth doesn't happen very automatically. Many people, in fact, grow older without really growing up. If you uh, look at children who have had significant like cerebral palsy or some other significant uh, problem in development and developmental delays, you will find how difficult it is for the family to realize that their child is not growing up, but just growing older. I closely know a child who is close to 16 years now, but has to be carried uh, by the parents, uh, cannot sit without support, uh, leave alone standing without support. That can be such a painful thing. In our spiritual lives also, if we do not really grow up as God intends us to, then it is a pain. The only safeguard against this happening in our lives is to train ourselves in the disciplines that God has kept for us. It's what uh, Second Timothy Paul calls it, training in righteousness. The scriptures are sufficient for our training in righteousness. So I'm just uh, mentioning this as an introduction to our quiet time. The conversion of a soul is the miracle of a moment, but the making of a saint, it is a task of a lifetime. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 15 says, by speaking the truth in love, we have to grow up in all things to him who is the head, that is Christ. So becoming like him is what our ultimate spiritual growth is. Growing spiritually means what? It means just becoming more and more like Jesus Christ. That is the very purpose of God in our lives. All of us, uh, many, most of us are in the medical profession. Our parents would have probably allowed us to be in this, allowed to see us to be in this profession because they wanted the best for our lives. Every parent thinks like that. What is the best for my child? Even if I, had, I have not become that, let my child become the best. That is the purpose of God in our lives. So if God the Father looks at us and he wants the best in us, what would he want us to be? What do you think? A doctor or an IAS officer? When God thinks that his children should be the best, he is thinking that each of his children should be like Jesus Christ. There is nothing better than that. That is the very purpose of God in our lives. Like Romans 8 and verse 29 says, he, those whom he foreknew, what, what did he call them for? He called them to be conformed to the image of his son. That is the purpose of God. In, in Galatians, Paul says, I also want to see that, seeing Christ formed in you. So the ultimate Spiritual growth or the sanctification process, the time that is given to us in, a, in this world is to become like Jesus Christ. So how do we assess our lives? How are we growing? We have to ask, assess, ask in various spheres of our life, have I become more like Jesus Christ? So disciplines actually help us by creating the boundaries that keep time and space open for God. Discipline per se may not really help us, but it keeps, it creates boundaries. It gives that space where God can work. It is not the discipline that changes us. It is God who is changing us. 
but it helps our lives to be arranged in such a way that god can work in our lives he can transform us from in square one and two are familiar how our lives have to be living sacrifice not to conform to this world but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind that's how we live our lives so that transformation happens by our times by our disciplines and one of those most important things is our time with god i will not go to the negative side of disciplines disciplines can be easily misused or manipulated and it can be become very legalistic i i have also um, been very legalistic about many disciplines at times um, god has to correct us but i will not go into that but um, about there are many spiritual disciplines some of them may be covered in the uh, the two days of conferences touched upon in some of the con- of the topics that you are listening to it could be divided as personal or interpersonal some people divide it as inward outward or corporate different types are there but generally if you look at uh, to make it too simple um, i would say there are four pillars of our faith one is the prayer and fasting second is the bible study and meditation of god's word third would be the fellowship and the corporate worship fourth would be witnessing and service this is too simplistic i understand um, it's not like an exhaustive list or anything but i find this useful i think that these are the pillars of our sanctification process so what i am uh, trying to touch upon is mainly the first two aspects our time with god which includes prayer even though i will be using the word prayer it doesn't mean only our supplication it includes everything else i may be using more and more from the um, life of jesus christ i will be using the word prayer but actually it includes all these the time of prayer the time of bible study the time of journaling the time of meditation everything together the personal time with god not the corporate time like we are having right now the personal time with god that is what i mean so for the for our help for the coming um, few minutes what i have taken is from the uh, gospel of mark and chapter 1 and verse 35 it's a very simple verse about jesus life it says very early in the morning while it was still dark he got up left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed this is all about the prayer life of jesus uh, very simple no uh, the holy spirit doesn't really uh, uses use words unnecessarily but if you look at it and ask a literature person and say uh, for this sentence how can you really summarize and convey the essence of it somebody would say jesus prayed or somebody would say jesus prayed in the morning something like that that would probably give us the essence of it but why did the holy spirit of god choose to give so much of details you can divide it into six details which i am going to run through to give us an idea of what was his prayer life like so we will probably go into each of these there was a purpose i understand that the holy spirit has given this amazing amount of details for our training prayer could be our quiet time could be just our soul being directed towards god to speak to him to listen from him to communicate with him to have fellowship with him so it will be our talking sometimes sometimes our listening sometimes just silence sometimes reading the word of god sometimes writing down because sometimes the thoughts in our minds are brain has to be disentangled as charles swindoll puts it beautifully he says the thoughts have to be disentangled through our lips or through the fingertips so two ways of disentangling the thoughts in our quiet time one is through our lips we communicate with god we worship him or speak out to him the other is by our fingertips or pens or if you are using a uh, a tab or a uh, or um, a typing any gadget it could be through your typing so through your fingertips and your lips some of these thoughts get disentangled so all these are communication all these are times of quietness with god as psalm says i lift up my soul to god that is what quiet time is that is what prayer time is it can happen in very many ways so first aspect of jesus's quiet time was that it happened early in the morning i know that 
many of us are not early risers many of us are night owls um, that may be the hip thing now it has to be it has been always a, a controversy which is better early morning or late night i do not know about you for each person you will have to decide what would be your best time your prime time the lord is uh, through the prophet malachi he was challenging the israelite peoples asking would you give something that is not best for your governor or your ruler your principal your panchayat president you wouldn't give the uh, best to even the local leaders you not the the not the good ones to the local leaders even how can you give that to god so when it comes to time the quiet time also it is important for us to find out what is the best that i can give for god my prime time it is important for me to give to god because it is my appointment with him and that has to set the tone for my day one of the ways uh, we find it difficult sometimes uh, to make it regular very many people especially youngsters often complain oh i am not able to be very regular with this so one of the ways i have found personally is even as a medical student i to attach it to something that you do very regularly you fix it like i will do this and this and this and then i will do my quiet time then i will have my breakfast and push off or something or i will finish all these before my sleeping time some people are very alert i am not uh, so alert in the night but many people i understand are very alert in the night that is the time i will do my quiet time or take my quiet time so you decide have some regularity to it attach it to something so that it will become part of our lives any habit for that matter will take about a month to take shape you would uh, when you uh, see your psychiatry postings and all the addiction and all those things you will find that most of these de addiction programs will be 3 weeks to 4 weeks because that is the time a human mind uh, takes to rewired into something new a habit that needs formation so formations happen like that so we need to attach it to something to make it very regular so the first years you may be just getting into a, a routine in your in your medical student days attach it to something that you are doing maybe as soon as i um, brush up and get ready in the morning itself i will take quiet time maybe that is the time or uh, like i personally used to get ready and even uh, dress up and all ready for college and then only i used to take my quiet time and then i used to feel less pressurized that the the hostel water would get over or uh, when i go for taking bath the all the bathrooms will be full i do not know how it is in now in colleges now we had all those problems um everybody will rush into the bathroom at the size uh, right at the same time and then there won't be water in the uh, top floors only the uh, ground floor will have water you run with your bucket to that all those complications so once you are done with it your mind is clear free you can take your quiet time choose your own style i am not saying this is what you have to do but this is what i found easy as a medical student the difficult problem is not really finding the time the difficult problem is convincing myself that it is important enough to find the time once that conviction comes inside it is easier to uh, find time okay the second aspect that the holy spirit tells us is about uh, that it was still dark first time i was uh, uh, drawn to this verse i was wondering why did the holy spirit really mention this very early in the morning okay that's fine that detail is okay why did the holy spirit specifically say that while it was still dark jesus went out to pray that's probably because mornings differ from person to person very early in the morning somebody will say for me 9 am is very early in the morning somebody would say for me 7 am is very early in the morning so there need not be any ambiguity now the holy spirit has clearly spoken and told that jesus is pattern was while it was still dark which means the sun has not come up it is a time of less disturbances less distractions whatever time zone you follow generally before the sun comes up world over there is less disturbances and distractions so you, you can i am sure in a in a men's hostel it is very very true i do not know uh, whether it is 
like that everywhere universally but at least in our men's hostels i can say till 2 am or till 1 am it is all activities all things going on but early in the morning 8:30 if you have to be in the college till 8 am then there is a frenzy of activity so less disturbances and distractions so it is important for us to find that time which is of uh, of quality and less disturbances that's what the psalmist says i rise before dawn and cry for help i hope in your words so it was his practice to rise before dawn rise before dawn so it is about not only about the the time the quality of the time also is very important so sometimes uh, we have this issue uh, we were in a in a medical student conference in orissa many years back i remember somebody one girl asking uh, is it not only important to have quality time rather than uh, having half an hour of quiet time or 20 minutes of quiet time uh, is it not just sufficient to have one minute of quality time so i i did not uh, know much uh, about uh, that person but i was immediately reminded of a person in our own college days there used to be a, a couple in my class they are married and um, living happily ever after uh, good professionals good friends of ours uh, so the both of them uh, got attracted to each other in first year itself and then decided to get married even uh, immediately after the internship they got married but this uh, this boy and girl uh, in our class they used to sit uh, together in the class they used to go out to have uh, tea after that they used to go out to roam around and then come back all the time from morning till evening we would always see them together throughout our days then after coming back also we used to have only one four days the mobile phones were not yet in vogue so we had 200 male students and one land phone which would ring from for all of us and there was a phone attender or a phone boy we called him who, who used to come and call us for our calls from homes and so this one phone this uh, this boy used to come back after all the time of spending with his beloved he would come back and then start calling her into the ladies hostel phone a local call and then keep on talking so we used to uh, our friends used to get very mad at him saying that you have been talking with her all this time and then now when we are waiting for our calls from home you are still talking to her what is there to so so much to talk about so you tell try telling him why is so quantity so important can't you have 5 minutes of quality time and then push off it wouldn't make any sense to him because it is a relationship of course i am not going to the the depth or the superficiality of it but it's not always about the 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 quality alone there is some amount of quantity that happens naturally because i remember starting my quiet time when because somebody gave me a small uh, track which said 7 minutes of god with with god sorry 7 minutes with god and then they had divided how you could use those 7 minutes 1 uh, uh, minute of uh, uh, adoration 1 minute of confession 1 minute of supplication then thanksgiving then 1 uh, minute of reading a scripture then 1 minute of uh, meditating i started with that then without my knowledge as i was in my medical college second year third year fourth year finally as the time went by i without my knowledge i realized that i was spending more and more time this was not intentional though it happened the regularity was intentional but the time increasing was not really very intentional it happened like that i i would spend more times during my study holidays because there was no hurry to rush to the class so i would sometimes spend the whole mornings Uh, studying the scripture and writing down my journal and doing all that and then only start studying okay different people may have different patterns i was challenged uh, one of those days uh, uh, by this uh, statement that hudson taylor made he he said he was a missionary to china for those of us who are not familiar with hudson taylor's story uh, he was a missionary um, and the founder of the china inland mission he said the sun has never risen upon china without seeing me at prayer it's a very challenging statement i also feel very humbled at that statement and um, i find myself wanting but many of you have moved now to online class offline classes and uh, wherever you are placed 
Maybe some of you have moved to a new place in your life. Can we put that place instead of China and make this, try to make this our testimony also? This is a very, very challenging statement that I have found. The third aspect that the Holy Spirit brings about is that Jesus got up. This is sometimes the most difficult thing. Uh, it's morning and then the getting up part is very difficult. You have to pull yourself out. It is difficult. You feel like hitting the, the alarm clock or mostly now the, your mobile phones will be giving your alarm. You feel like throwing it away sometimes. There is an act of volition that is involved. It is not out of, uh, um, not out of a compulsion which comes from something else but out of a relationship. Sometimes there are times in our lives where we will feel that, oh, I don't want to take quiet time. I don't want to spend time with God. But that doesn't mean that you should stop altogether. There are times of uh, on and times off, as Ecclesiastes mentions very clearly. There are times when we feel very much uh, close to God and times where we do not feel very close to God. But it is important that we persist with that habit. I, I was very helped by what uh, Lee Straubel wrote about uh, this. He was telling about uh, uh, a mother, a mother, mothers of so small children. You would have seen some of the mothers who had have to get up in the morning. The moment the baby is wet, the baby wants a change in the night. The mother has to get up, and the father is snoring away and sleeping. But the mother gets up and then changes their nappies. This you would have seen. The mother also do not want to really get up, but the relationship makes her to somehow get up. So the mother cannot tell to herself, no, I do not really like doing, changing the nappies for my child. So I may not be liking my child or I am not loving my child enough. In fact, the mother should set, tell to herself that even when I do not like doing or doing the chores or changing the nappies, I still do it. That is what proves my love for the child. Similarly, even when I do not feel like taking the quiet time, if I take quiet time, that is what proves my love for the Lord. So keep at it. Even when you don't feel like, keep at it. So there are many days where I do not feel like reading the Bible. But because it is a discipline, because it has become a practice, keep at it. God will continue to speak to us. It is his prerogative when to speak and how to speak. But it is for us to be available for his transformative work in our lives. So this preparation has to happen. Even the day, the night before, somebody said the, the battle for the quiet time is won or lost in the night before. If the night is very busy and you sleep very late, then it's very difficult. It was told about uh, 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 Stanley Jones. Stanley Jones, who was a missionary, he used to uh, stop all appointments by about 9.30 in the night. And he said, I have an important appointment in the morning, so I cannot spend more time with you. And what was this important appointment? It was his meeting with God. So that preparation is very important in our quiet times. There is, there is an anticipation and an excitement of getting up sometimes in our lives. Not always. The psalmist says, my eyes are awake through the night watches that I may meditate on your word. I have heard this from uh, often uh, Dr. Bina who used to say, I used to wait for it to be morning so that I can sit up and uh, wake up and then start meditating and worshipping and spending time with God. There are times, uh, very, very rare times where I have felt like that. But then uh, you continue to do that even when. You, uh, many of you would have been in hostels. You, you, do you remember the days when the, uh, the holidays start? I studied in a school hostel. So I can very well remember the days when the holidays start. We know our parents are coming to pick us up. Uh, you cannot sleep that night. You are just waiting through the night watches that the morning will come. The other days is difficult. Our children are also like that. On the holidays, they will be up in the morning. The other days, when they have to go to school earlier, they find it very difficult to wake up because there is an anticipation and an excitement about the day. Same thing happened to the, um, the psalmist during his quiet times. Sometimes we feel that uh, we are very busy as medical students, uh, but we don't. We have to remember this verse from Jeremiah chapter twelve and verse five. It says, "If you have to run with footmen and then you have, they have wearied you, 
then how can you content with horses kalalugalodu kuda odi ee shinichu povaanengile how will you run with horses if you are going to be tired in plain land how will you run in the thickets of jordan that is the question if you cannot find time as a meditator and how will you find time as a find time as a family person how will you find time as the mother of children so this is the best time to invest into this as billy graham said if you are too busy to pray then we are busier than god intends us to be then the next part of the verse says he left the house this is also very important aspect of leaving sometimes we want to take quiet time but we are not able to leave of course very often uh, our gadgets are the ones which are difficult to leave very i know some of you might be taking your quiet times using the bible and the phone and all i have personally i have used it but i have personally found it very distracting unless you put it in flight mode or something some message comes something happens you suddenly feel like doing something else because the gadget is with you so i still use my printed bible to take my quiet time i use my phone bible for very many uses but very often i use the printed bible only for my quiet time so distractions leaving things it will not be only gadgets there are things which we kept keep with ourselves maybe i am so so much in a relationship i cannot but think about that person or i am so much in a hate relationship with one person i cannot but think about that person whether you love or you think you love too much or you think you hate too much you cannot get them out of your mind leave left the house leaving things is very important forgiving people leaving them these are all important aspects of your quiet time with god uh any preoccupation can be a hindrance because when i am full i cannot hear from god okay i'm uh leaving that there and then uh, there is a need for a quietness that is there in our minds uh, what my one of our mentors used to say dr kya john used to say there is an outer quietness there is a physical quietness there is a inner quietness the outer quietness is why we very often choose the mornings the physical quietness is why again sometimes we choose the morning because physically we are more fresh uh, put yourself in comfortable positions don't be in a very difficult position physically then you cannot really concentrate on your quiet time you can you can get distracted and in a quietness also leaving people leaving things jesus then did one thing he went away to uh, not only left home he went away to a secluded place he didn't leave home to go to the market place he went to a secluded place where intimate talk was possible uh, children please use quiet places but also safe places maybe your your own rooms are the most quiet places for me it was like that my roommates used to get uh, get up wake up late so i used to have better time sometimes uh, some hum, some hostels or your homes the terrace may be the place or your own personal rooms i do not know how it is for each one of you find a quiet place but a safe place especially for sisters i would strongly encourage you to find only safe places otherwise you may not be knowing what is happening around you it is a time to intimately talk with the lover of our souls i i still respect my friend who has uh, we were classmates and we were in this hostel and in the mornings i used to see my friend um, we grew up in the lord together uh, uh, he used to take the bible and then just walk across to the ground uh, those who have uh, are in calicut medical college will know how our natural stadium is the ground is and there is a hill on the other side which is called the panjara kunna for obvious reasons um, so this panjara kunna was uh, the hot spot for all the couples in the evenings and my friend would go in the morning where nobody is there that time he would go to the panjarakund the sugar hill you could call it and i used to think to myself my friend is going to meet his lover my friend is going to meet his lover he would lie down i used to see him lying down uh, facing the sky with his bible in his hand and worshiping uh, so that has made an impact in my life uh, he went to a secluded place to 
come to the lover of the soul. That's why Matthew 6 and 6, Jesus says, when you pray, go into your room and close the door and pray to the Father who is unseen. Then Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Finally, this is a prayer life. What happened was actually prayer happened. Sometimes very many other things happen. We may be even writing down a very good journal. Uh, as an author said, I also in my life at certain points, I used to be so religious in journaling. Whatever uh, I read from the Bible, I had to immediately think, what is it? What is the message for me? I had to somehow write down something. It was almost as if when I reached the other shore in heaven, God will ask me to submit all my journals as a composition in school. Where is your quiet time journaling? And uh, there are some pages missing and you will get a uh, ice cream for those good meditations and you will be uh, not giving given a red mark for uh, those missing pages. Of course, those missing pages are a good reminder for me. Sometimes I go through the whole year and see how many pages in my diary are blank. That is a good discipline. I would say that all of us should journal. Journaling is a very important thing. I already mentioned to you that, that thoughts that God puts in our hearts are disentangled through our fingertips. But that should not become a legalistic thing. Instead of meeting the Lord, you might not, you might be so preoccupied with the journaling part of it. Meeting the Lord of the quiet time is the essence of the prayer. The essence of the quiet time is the meeting with the Lord. And the relationship develops with that. We are, we are familiar with the uh, nursery rhyme which says, uh, Pussycat, Pussycat, where have you been? I've been to London to visit the Queen. So the Pussycat went to London and with all the pomp and glory of the Queen, Pussycat, Pussycat, what did you see there? He saw the mouse under the throne. He didn't see the pomp and glory of the Queen because he was so preoccupied with what he wanted. Sometimes in our prayer times, it is like that. It is my need what is most important for me. So we forget what is uh, what the essence of the quiet time is that the, the, the Lord himself. Uh, our pastor used to tell uh, the one who, uh, one who teaches you call uh, a teacher. Like one who plays you call a player. One who sings you call a singer. So one who prays you should call him a prayer. I don't know whether you got it. Prayer is actually a person. A prayer is a person. It's an embodiment of a relationship. Prayer is a person. It is Soren Kierkegaard who said the man prayed and first he thought that prayer was talking and he became more and more quiet until in the end he realized that prayer is listening. God does this in our lives and he awakens me morning by morning. Sometimes even without the alarm, God awakens us. In Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 4. He awakens my ear to listen as a disciple. That's what, that's God's work in our lives. I'll stop with the, with the mention of answers. Of course, answers to prayer comes. It comes, but not always in the affirmative. When, as the bishop, uh, Archbishop William Temple, who said, when I pray, somebody asked, oh, you pray and then things happen. Maybe it's all coincidences. He said, when I pray, coincidences happen. When I do not, they don't happen. So coincidences may be what we, our explanation for that, but when I pray, it keeps happening. So God can give us answers in the affirmative or as a negative answer also. Some reasons could be there. When you ask and you do not receive, because you ask him is that you may spend it on your pleasures. These are very difficult verses. James chapter 4 and verse 3. When we ask for our selfish things, what percentage of our prayer is all about us and what percentage is for others? Is it all about me, like the pussycat and nothing about others and God and his glory itself? We, if the prayer does not change the situation for us also, it changes us for that situation. That may be a greater thing that to happen then changing the situation, changing us may be a greater purpose of what is happening. As uh, against Stanley Jones, I think he said, as a boatman, when the boat comes to the 
shore. You would have seen this rope that they throw into the shore or a, or a pole in the shore and then they pull the shore to the boat. Is that what happens? No, they, they pull the boat to the shore. Sometimes in prayer, what we want to do is somehow to align God's will to mine. We are trying to pull the shore to the boat. Whereas in prayer, what is to happen is aligning my boat, my will to his will. That is the ultimate answer of prayer. When and my will and his will merge together. That is how we are being transformed. And we all with unveiled face, the picture that Deepak had shown, how we could behold the glory of the Lord, have been transformed into the same image of glory, one degree of glory to another. So, quiet time is a transformative time. There is no other way in which you can really be transformed. God has given us his word to be transformed. All the other things might help us, but the most important thing is our personal time with God. So, what do we do? You can do your own structuring. Maybe there is some time of worship, some time of uh, confessing uh, whatever God reminds us. It is important to journal because of that also God reminds us what is happening in our lives and some time of listening to God and receiving from Him uh, and uh, expressing our desires to God. Some time of supplication, some time of praying, intercession. All these may be incorporated into your quiet times. So, I will leave this here. Uh, may the Lord continue to help us and uh, for all those who are in medical college now as students, uh, my prayer for you and the request to you is that try to develop a habit. It may be legalistic. Don't bother. Let it be legalistic. Don't worry. But unless it is developed, the transformation process will be retarded. So once you develop that, let it happen. God will work through that. And then ultimately, who knows, we will be... Wake, uh, waking up like the psalmist, waiting for the morning as living examples are around us. May God bless us. Shall we just uh, pray for a moment? Sovereign Lord, we thank you for this time. Lord, we thank you for reminding us about the truths of your scripture and the need for our quiet times. We commit all of us who have listened to this that our lives will be aligned with your word. We thank you for the CMF platform that has allowed us to have fellowship together and to have uh, to be challenged to grow together, Lord. Thank you for this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sachoy, for enlightening us on the importance of spending quiet time with God. You will surely take your words into account and spent a separate quiet time with God, reading the Bible and meditating on it in our hectic medical lives. Now let me invite Albert again for another song. <laughs> 